Hello again, everyone. I wanted to share some thoughts that I've had, I'd say maybe over the past three or four weeks, um, dealing with what I'm seeing happening in the news broadcasts and how it relates to Bible prophecy. Now, what I'm about to share with you is simply my, my ramblings or my impressions of things I feel the Lord urging my heart to pay attention to. Uh, I want to establish the fact right now that I do not consider myself a prophet. I'm not a prophet. God has not called me that. I just know that I feel he's laid on my heart an urgency for years now to just to simply pay attention to the signs of the times uh, and to correlate what I see happening with with the written word of God. Uh, so what I'm about to share with you is not something that I feel that God has given me a definite confirmation on. So I want to make I want to preface this video with that. First off, I'm just going to share my thoughts with you and share my heart with you on how I feel the Lord's been leading me to see certain things that are transpiring this year. And I'm simply comparing what I'm seeing in the news and what's forecasted to happen this year in the news and comparing it with Bible prophecy. Remember, the Lord says that we are to watch always, for we do not know when the time will come. And I believe the time the Lord is talking about is Daniel's 70th week the seven years of tribulation, the tribulation hour itself. The Lord is telling us we need to watch, for we do not know when that time will come. So what I'm doing in this video is simply relating to you a few things that I feel the Lord has brought to my attention. I mean, he's brought many things to my attention, and if I were to expound on all of them, I'd have you watching this video for hours, and I'm not going to do that to you. Um, but something I wanted for you to just take note of and pay attention to, and maybe you could pray about it and look into it yourself and see what you feel the Lord's leading you to think. I jotted a few things down on a notepad as well as um, brought uh, a couple things up on my phone here. I wanted to start off by telling you, I'm sure most of you are aware of this, that the UN, the United Nations, is having what they call their... Um, uh, their Secretary General's high-level panel of eminent persons on the post-2015 development agenda. Let me say that again. In September of this year, they, the UN will be hosting the post-2015 development agenda. While, while this agenda, this meeting at the UN is going on, they will also be discussing what is called the Millennium Development Agenda. Okay, and apparently this Millennium Agenda a development agenda was beginning to be spoken about uh, heavily, I'd say heavily, back in 2010. Um, so they had set goals in 2010, concrete goals, that they wanted met by the end of 2015 called the Millennium Development Agenda. So this Millennium Development Agenda is coinciding with, as far as I'm aware, is coinciding with this post-2015 development agenda. Now, I wanted to bring to your attention, along with this post-2015 development agenda, that the Pope will be attending this meeting as well, I hear. Um, also, he will be attending, uh, let me see, he's coming to the USA in uh, September as well, and he will be speaking to the UN, and he will also be speaking to a joint session of Congress, which a Pope has never done before. So I'm, I'm putting a lot of things together. Uh, the fact that the Pope is, uh, that Francis is the first Jesuit Pope. Um, he's also the black Pope. Uh, this has never happened before where a black Pope, a Jesuit Pope has been positioned for such a time as this. That the UN is having a meeting, these two meetings about the Millennium Development Agenda, the post-2015 agenda, and that the Pope, the first Jesuit general, is actually a part of this. And this is something that that, like I said, I'm just rambling out loud here, giving you something to think about that you can look into to pay attention to the times and relate it to scripture and just be awake. I, to me, these are warning signals from the Lord to the church. You need to be paying attention. You need to be watching. I have read in the past that the United Nations, and you all can confirm this or do your own research on this and correct me if I'm wrong, please, but I've read in, in research in the past that the UN they are known for making treaties throughout the years, throughout the decades. They're known for making treaties and partnerships with people for seven-year time spans. Um, I, and when I read that a couple of years ago, that caught my attention. But I've heard that they are known for making treaties with people, whether they're financial, um, whether they are uh, 
agricultural, whether it's, it's political, that they're known to make agreements, we should say, with different nations, for, for, and some of those agreements have been for seven year time spans. So when I, I thought about that, and the fact that this is taking place in 2015, and the title of this UN meeting is called the Post-2015 Agenda. We already know that, um, that you know, the, the, the presidents have already said this is a post-Christian era, that this nation is no longer considered Christian. You know, President Obama has been very clear about that, that we now live in a post-Christian era. Um, we now have what's called a new world pope. If you notice, everything is new world this and new world that, or one world this and one world that. So now we've got this post-2015 agenda. We've got this millennium agenda. Another thing that I felt interesting that the Holy Spirit drew my attention to was this millennium development agenda. They have eight goals that they want to establish. What caught my attention was the word millennium. Now we know, as we've discussed in previous videos that I've discussed with you, that Satan's agenda is to be like the Most High. And what caught my attention with the word millennium is that we know that the Lord is going to come back very soon, I believe in a few short years, and he will establish his millennial reign on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And what I found interesting is the word millennium development agenda. Now we know that Satan right now is called the prince of this world, the god of this world. I firmly believe that the UN is, is run by the prince of the power of this world, which is Satan. I firmly believe that. They're not going to come out and tell you that they are high Luciferians, but they are. They're not going to come out and say that in the news, but they are. <laughs> um, the fact that Satan wants to be like God in every respect, it doesn't surprise me that they're calling this a millennium development agenda and that Satan is choosing through the UN to use the word millennium. So as, as I'm saying to you, this is simply something that I wanted to bring to your attention. I don't, I'm sure many of you maybe have already researched this, but it, it's just another wake up call uh, to pay attention to the signs of the times, to relate what you're hearing in the news with scripture. Um, we won't know the details of this meeting come this September, of course, until they play out. And, and I believe a lot of these things that the Lord will have, that he'll bring to our attention is as they play out. We're, we're going to recognize as things are fulfilled that, oh, this is scripture and this is scripture. Right now, this is just speculation on my part. I simply felt led by the Lord to bring this video out for you to research it some more. I, I know I'm in the process of doing that, and I felt that the Lord brought that to my attention a few weeks ago to start searching out the UN post-2015 agenda, this millennium development agenda. Um, he brought to my attention and reminder that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the UN will make treaties and agreements with nations over different issues for a span of seven years. They, and and it, it's cyclical. You know, it's, it, it, it's cyclical, these seven-year agreements that the UN will make. Um, so I found that interesting. And of course, correlating the fact that Daniel says that the covenant with many, that the Antichrist, the man of sin, will make, will be with the many for seven years. And what the Lord brought to my attention is that it could be, at least I felt this is what he was bringing to my attention, so please research this yourself. The United Nations, the United Nations, these are, you know, all these nations coming together with the Pope visiting. And when Daniel says that he confirms a covenant with the many, I've often thought that, yes, it does include Israel and her enemies, her surrounding Arab enemies, the Palestinians, but I'm, I'm opening this up to your judgment and speculation as well with me. Do you believe like I'm beginning to believe that this covenant with the many not only includes Israel and her enemies, but also includes the nations. I just feel like the Lord's bringing that to my attention, that it might not just be between Israel and her enemies alone. It could also be incorporating the nations. Um, I could be wrong, but I felt the Lord was drawing my attention to this. I'm not a sensationalist. I don't like drama. As a matter of fact, I stay away from sensationalism and drama and, and hype. I, I stay away from it and I discourage it. I'm not a date setter. I don't want to put times and dates on anything or read more into something than is there. But I wanted to bring to your attention uh, these blood moons uh, that fall on feast days. We, we've already been through two blood moons that have fallen on the exact feast days of the Lord. Uh, we are due for a... Two more 
blood moons falling on feast days. The last being a super blood moon in September. Now I've prayed about this. I'm not sure where the Lord has led me to, um, to, to see right now about all this correlating with the blood moons and the feast days. But I feel that the Holy Spirit is causing me right now to be in a mode of watching because there have been past blood moon tetrads where major prophetical events have happened for the nation of Israel. So I'm just drawing your attention to some things that I feel in prayer lately that the Holy Spirit has been drawing my attention to. That we have a Jesuit Pope for the first time. He's a black Pope. Um, the UN is holding their post-2015 agenda, which I find interesting. And of course, Joe Biden was speaking recently to cadets graduating that they were the generation to usher in the new world order. So I put that together with the fact that we've got blood moons falling on actual feast days of the Lord. And the Lord said in Genesis that he gave the, the sun and the moon and the stars as signs for seasons. Now, seasons translated in Hebrew, I believe, translates into feasts. You know, we translate it in English as seasons. But the Lord says He also that the word feasts, um, that he would use blood moons to signal feast days, his times, his feast days to signal the earth and give signs. So I'm, I'm putting all this together, this millennium development agenda, the fact they're using the word millennium of all things. Satan knows that Christ is coming soon, very soon, by the way, to establish his millennial reign from Mount Zion. He is trying, I believe, to usurp Mount Zion from the Lord to establish his own millennial reign. And I can see him using the United Nations to make this happen. And it's very interesting that all this is coming together uh, this year. Now, does this mean that I'm setting dates and times and that this could be the year that the, the covenant with many is signed? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I don't know that. I just wanted to put out a video of news events and things that are taking place that I felt the Lord bringing to my attention to pay attention to. But he did not give me anything relevatory concerning this. I felt him telling me to write these things down, to watch as they play out in the news, and to pay careful attention. But I wanted to just share that with you, ramble from my heart a little bit and share that with you and, and just suggest that if you haven't looked into these things that maybe you might want to and pray about it and just see what conclusions the Lord brings you to. And maybe you can leave some comments on this video for me and tell me what you think. But uh, thank you for listening to me and, and thank you for watching this video. And I look forward to the fellowship that we will share. It's exciting. It's so exciting as we contemplate the coming of the Lord and we see these things coming together in our generation. Think about it. We could have been born at any other time, and he chose now for us to be here. I'm beyond excited. So, But thank you for watching, and have a good day in the Lord, everyone.